Okay, so <clears throat> I do hope now it will be a bit better uh, than it was before. At least I did everything that I could uh, and uh, well, let's see how it works. Uh, once you are, um, yeah, once you are online and you see the uh, broadcast, just let me know how's, how does it work right now. So, um, let us continue. Let us continue with uh, challenges. Now, the normal order of challenges. And the first was uh, Mobius today. I will accept it. So, here we go. And white pieces. So, probably there will be Sicilian, right? As usual. Okay, so what to play today? Let's play bishop e2. And this queen d3 line that I do appreciate. Because it's just quite rare and, well, it's very logical. That is the main idea. So I just prepared knight e5 with the queen d3 move. Then I played knight e5. Now I have kind of slight advantage maybe because because of just a pair of bishops and have a bit more space maybe. Or at least it feels like that. So Moby Chess says stream is all right. Okay. So after a4, usually the knight goes to a1 to have a chance to play knight c2 and knight a3 and knight b5. If I will play rook to c1 now, there will be bishop g5, exchanging dark squared bishops. So probably it makes sense for me to start with the rook a to d1. Now I can just play this, I think. Save the bishop on the board. <clears throat> so I'm not crazy. It's just typical maneuver. So knight c2, knight a3, knight b5. Otherwise, this knight has no perspective. So if it goes to d2 or c1, it's just too bad. And there is also another idea to put the queen on a3 at some point. So let's see. For example, now it can be interesting to put the queen on a3. Because if I play knight c2 here, then knight c5. Who knows? Maybe it is exactly what I want. So knight c2, knight c5, knight c5, queen goes to a3. It's very hard to evaluate that position. So it's kind of a mix of different ideas. 
No, no, let's try it. So knight c2. And at some point I can try even bishop e1 move to try to get rid of this queen on a5. But maybe I will just play knight b4 followed by knight d3 attacking the knight c5. And if knight takes on d3 position has been a bit simplified, my queen on a3 will exert some pressure on d6 pawn. Yeah, position is quite strange. So long term, I have some uh, interesting squares to occupy, but short term, uh, well, it's not clear how I can exploit them. So I think position should be equal, in fact. Oh, b6, we can c6. That is what I was waiting for. So let's go there. Let's go there. I'm not sure b6 was forced. That gives me a very strong point for the knight. Very good. Yeah. So just like this. And now I think I can play b4 even, because the rook on a8 is hidden. Yeah, so now I think white is just better. White has an advantage, all of a sudden. Knight e7, all right. So now how to convert it? So c5 immediately, or just gradually maneuvering the bishop to attack a4 pawn, that could be also a plan. Because c5 immediately leaves me without the dark squared bishop, which is not very cool. So yeah, I think I will just exert pressure on a4 instead. Let's do it. So can I just take on a4 now? Is it possible? Well, I guess it is. Very complicated game. Now I think that probably bishop a4 was not necessary at, at all. <laughs> On the other hand, if black plays something like rook a6, I can play b5 and then d6 is hanging. So let's do it. Rook a8, and yeah, I have a film that I can take on d6. The knight on c7 is also hanging. Should give me some extra material. And now, of course, not to a3, but probably to b4. 
do you have a chance to go away with the bishop if it is needed just like here so let's put the bishop on b3 simply i have too many extra pawns and a lot of time yeah so b6 b6 was a mistake and b6 gave me just very simple play just right away just now before knight c6 exactly what i was dreaming about in this position so instead of b6 it was necessary to do something else so maybe to play uh i don't know g6 and then maneuvering the bishop somehow maybe just gradually preparing something on the king's side maybe knight c7 maybe just knight to f6 there are a lot of uh, waiting moves for black here um so they all were much better than creating this weakness on c6 okay so after b6 as you can see knight b4 knight c6 everything is just like one by one without much thinking because every move is very uh, natural uh probably here it was much better to uh put the queen somewhere still protecting the rook on the a8 so there were two possibilities to queen a6 or queen b7 um, in both cases i was uh, thinking of playing queen b4 so after queen b7 or queen a6 I just play queen b4 again slightly improving my position uh, now for instance there is a, a very annoying threat of just taking only five followed by bishop takes c5 so queen on b7 starts heading Mm, and uh, at some point I can just play b3 takes takes then queen goes away somewhere b4 and so on so gradually just pushing my pawns in the center and uh, on the king's side that's the idea anyways thanks a lot for the game as usual just uh, a pleasure okay formless is the next so now I have to focus because uh, usually I lose to this guy Today again I play with white. So let's play. Again dragon. So, this slightly weakens d6, and I think I have to attack it somehow. Not sure where to put the knight, though. I think this should be natural. Followed by knight c4, attacking d6. <laughs> of course black can play d5 if he wants and probably it's just a guy for black yeah So, yeah, I have nothing in this position, I guess. Because d4 is coming, that's the problem. d4 is coming, so I have no time to blockade the pawn. <laughs> yeah, black is even slightly better here, I think. Or maybe it's just a complete equality. I don't know. Let's just keep playing.
So I'm trying to control d4. Black simply has more controlling pieces at the moment, so I think black can play d4 if he wants. Of course, after exchange on b3. But, well, this also gives me some... Yeah, bishop g5 was an interesting resort for me uh, in the line of knight b3 and d4, so h6 is kind of protecting g5 square and preparing d4. But now I think I have the time to blockade to blockade the d5 pawn, which is very important, so let's do it. Mm, now it's time to complete a development. Where to put the bishop? On f4. Yeah, it looks normal. There will be something like g5. There is also a possibility just to take on c6 first. To simplify position a bit, to put another knight on d4. With the idea of f3. Just getting rid of this central knight e4. I guess it's a bit more logical than developing the bishop simply. Yeah. So now f3. Yeah, why not? Just go away. Go away, my friend. I don't want you on e4. Thank you. So now bishop f4. All right. All right. <clears throat> I think position is still equal. But now at least I have some sort of clear plan, something like this. So I'll just improve positions of my pieces, probably exchange some of them to simplify it, because after all, we deal with the isolated pawn. It's just a natural idea to exchange as many pieces as possible, to take on g7 or to play queen f4. Queen f4 is also good looking move. I don't even know. So queen f4, g5. No, g5, queen f5. So yeah, let's do it. I don't think f6 is possible here. So I have bishop d6 at the very least. But maybe bishop g7 followed by queen f4 was a bit more solid. All right. Now it's kind of transposition. Okay, takes, takes. I don't see how can I improve position more. Now let's take on g7 just to get rid of this unnecessary tactics. Now what? Let's say h4. I think white has to be slightly better here because of this bishop b7. Maybe even not slightly better, but I don't want to be too optimistic here. Okay, let's go back. It was a bit unpleasant. Is it possible to take on e6 with the bishop and then to play f4? 
Looks very tempting, to be honest. Maybe to start with the f4. Then knight takes d4. It's kind of annoying. But okay. No? Oh, thank you. That's great. <clears throat> Typical advantage for white, like in French defense. Absolutely winning position for white strategically. But I have no time, so I have to be faster. Now it's winning, that's for sure. The only question if I have enough time to convert it. Check. Come back. So extra pawn. In addition to everything. Yeah. <clears throat> Let's put my pieces on ideal positions. Now let's go and checkmate that guy. So after bishop h3, uh, after bishop h3, it was necessary to take on d4, absolutely. So I mean, here it was possible to take on d4, then f3, then d2, but this led to extra exchange for white. But after f4, I mean, that's my idea. So here after f4, it was necessary already to take on d4. So with the threat of knight f3, so that's uh, I have to recapture on d4. Otherwise, I just lose a queen. And here I thought uh, something like rook c4 will be unclear. Immediately or after rook takes c1, rook takes c1 and then rook c4. Yeah, here. So it's unclear because there is a counterplay with the d4. So I was lucky actually. Maybe this f4 was too much. I wanted to achieve the same uh, position. I mean, uh, with this great knight d4 against uh, the bishop. But uh, immediate bishop b6, I just didn't like it because of uh, this possibility. Maybe, maybe it was possible for white to play this. So f takes c5, rook takes c5. Mm, let's say queen to f4. Yeah, queen to f4, something that I underestimated. To queen f4, rook goes to e8, queen f7 check, right? And then takes on e5, takes on b7, winning the game simply. Yes, absolutely right. So it was necessary for me to take on e6 immediately and then to play f4. And the same, because after e5, I just take on queen f4. Looks very promising. Yeah, absolutely right. That was my mistake. And after f4, uh, to play rook c to d8 was black's mistake. So knight takes d4 was necessary. After rook c d8, it's lost. So there is nothing to discuss. It's a typical pattern with the dominant knight. So this bishop is just absolutely useless. Moreover, it is a better version for white because, well, uh, the pawn structure is just awful for black. All right? Yep. Uh, Don G asks uh, if I lost today. Mm, not yet. Right? I think. Yeah. I didn't lose today. Let's continue. Phenomen is the next. <sighs> yeah, now I feel much better. And I do hope the stream is a Kai. Still a Kai, right? Rui Lopez, as usual, against Phenomen. D3, and to avoid this C4, which I think is annoying. I start usually with the b5. Bishop b3, bishop e7. Oh. c3, d6. Castles. Ah, 
92, bishop f8, so I do the same like in Smyslov variant. But the pawn is on d3, that is the difference. Okay. Sooner or later, white will have to play d4. Huh. This can be a good idea. So takes b4, takes b4, knight c6, bishop d2 will be played probably. Where after I have d5 attacking this b4, there might be a problem with protecting b4 pawn, to be honest. There is also a question to do this immediately or after knight c6. I mean, to take immediately or to play knight c6 first. Maybe teasing white a bit, forcing it to take on c5. No, know. let's just make this weakness. Well, not weakness, just vulnerability. I have the same on b5. And let's try to get to this pawn gradually. <clears throat> now just d5 right why not b4 will be hanging so black's position looks quite comfortable quite good right so i start grabbing the space <laughs> and this looks like a pawn on b4 so i will start with this move bishop b4 immediately was also possible but i guess this it's a bit better because bishop on c2 is now hanging. So I can take on b4 with the knight attacking the bishop. I can also take on b4 with the bishop. And after some exchanges, uh, there will be hanging bishop c2. I don't know what is better, actually, to save the bishop on f8 or not to save it. I think it's a bit more solid to have the bishop on f8, so I'll just take on b4 with the knight. And now I think d4 should be just logical, uh, closing diagonal, restricting the queen, preventing knight takes e5. So e5 pawn was hanging. Uh, Craig Evans asks about this, but as you can see, I had the time to counterattack opponent's pieces. Yep. So now, if I play something like Queen e7, protecting the knight on b4, there is a knight e5 possibility, deflecting my queen. So it looks like I should rather go away with the knight, but this knight looks so good in a sense of restricting the bishop, b1. So is it possible for me to play, let's say, queen to a5? Looks a bit strange, right? So the knight will be pinned. On the other hand, 
I will control more squares. Let's try queen a5. Because, for example, if bishop c2, I think I have queen a2 move, simplifying the position a bit. And in case of exchange on a2, get into c3 square. Just protecting e5 and maybe freeing my rook e8. Also controlling c7 so that I can play queen a4 if I want. Next move. All right. This is kind of relief. It's a favorable simplification of the position, I think. So I have extra pawn and pair of bishops now. I see no reason to keep queens on the board. Now it's time to activate the rook. Yep, attack in d3. If rook b3, there are a lot of different ways for black to win. After knight e1, there should be also a lot of different ways to win. But I can't see the one which will be precise, so... Do not. Let's make a move. Let's try to be just fast. Knight on f6 makes nothing, so. It's time to activate it. Oh, pawn on h3 is hitting, by the way. I have to grab it at some point. For example, here. Uh, what is that? What the hell is going on? Yep, so dramatic, dramatic finish of the game. Of course, it was better, uh, much better for black uh, after I managed to grab the pawn. But, uh, well, at some point I missed the thread and uh, started making uh, a bit nervous moves. I don't know why. Uh, so let's have a look here, for example, after rook c8, bishop a2, rook c3. Was it really necessary to put the rook on c3 immediately? Well, it looks very natural. Uh, the other thing is that after knight e1, I wanted to play rook c1 initially, but then somehow I was a bit, yeah, I was a bit uncertain about king f1, so what to do next? I have no idea. Of course, I played not bad. 
So g6, knight e2, rook here, bishop here. But here, of course, it was necessary just to put the rook on a1. I missed this moment. So now I have a threat of bishop b4. That's the point, right? Yeah. So have no idea. But okay. Yeah, white made a mistake. I think b4 was too much. So b4 was too optimistic. After cb4, cb4, knight c6, as we can see, I have direct attack um, against b4. So this means it was better for white to try bishop d2 if he wanted to play b4. Um, so to prepare this properly. That's the point. Okay, let's go further. The next is Craig Evans, except. And e4, f4, my goodness. I'm being just attacked. Starting from the move number two. Okay, queen e2 is something interesting. Just preventing d5, right? Yeah, preventing d5, okay. Let us just develop the pieces the other way. So I didn't want the knights occupying d5. That's why I played c6. And at some point, maybe I will play d5. Maybe, I'm not sure. Yeah, for instance, after casting, it looks quite natural, right, to play d5. H4. Okay, I think I can afford playing H5 or not. H5 now goes to H2, right? Yeah, now goes to H2 and might be annoying. Slightly. Or not slightly. Bishop g4, h5 is also not very pleasant. Okay, let's put the rook on e8. Looks like a logical follow up of d5 move. Strange position. It's very hard to evaluate who's better. So I still have an extra pawn, but I will lose it very soon. We have uh, opposite castles. So there might be just a pattern. Who's faster, right? Yeah, can be. Okay. That was the square I wanted to occupy. F8 and G3, very sharp move. Very sharp move. Let's take it. I don't know. What are the consequences of it? G file becomes open very soon. And I will be attacked along it. Yeah, just like this.
very interesting position very hard to evaluate it's very tempting just to take an e4 and then to try something connected with the queen d5 at some point maybe even immediately but then knight goes back to c3 was possible Okay, my opponent decided even not to not to take an e4. Which is quite brave. So I will put my bishop on f5 or not. Or just knight d7. Knight d7, knight takes f7 will be played. I have a feeling that it will be something amazing. Well, I don't know what should be played here. Let's start with the bishop e6. Looks like a solid move <clears throat> prior to playing knight e7. So I definitely have to do something with this knight e5. I guess. Might be very dangerous, my goodness. Yeah, g3 was very imaginative move, to be honest. And bishop b6 was probably not very accurate. Yeah. <clears throat> so g7 is burning just burning let's take on e5 <clears throat> Something really crazy is happening here. Uh, where to put my queen? On e6. Yeah. Let's drive it home. Now I have to, I guess. This weekends a lot. And I have no time. Yeah, just amazing game. Very cool. Very cool one. A real challenge. Now let's take it. I think it will be not bad to take this one on A2. Something amazing. How to coordinate the pieces? That's the question. I have no idea how. Just have no time to figure it out.
being gradually smashed. Honestly. <clears throat> But I have a lot of pawns, so there is a compensation. Sort of. Of course. There is just no time. Yeah. Lost on time. Still with some chances to win the game even here. I mean, connected past pawns and so on. Yeah, that was just a crazy attack against me. Very good game. So G3. Probably it was just better for me to ignore this pawn on G3 and to play something like Bishop G4, maybe to take on E4 finally. There was also an interesting idea just to play b5, let's say, to create a threat of b4. I guess that was something correct. So b4 and then to take on e4 is kind of very annoying threat. Or b4 followed by bishop a6, something like this. So it was very important to fight for central squares in this heavy way. So um, yeah, I think it takes g3 is also playable, but psychologically it is just very hard to play this. So after knight e5, uh, bishop e6 was another mistake, because after queen g3 and knight e7, uh, I was really afraid of just simple rook g1 attacking g7. Because if I play bishop f6 here, then knight e4 looks really bad for me, because there is a threat of just taking on f6, I have no idea what to do here. Um, so probably I'm forced to play g6, but well, it weakens so many squares. Yeah, cool, cool. All right, so let's continue. Let's continue. Artur Navrovsky is the next. Yeah, nice. Lopez still no Berlin oh Bishop B4 seriously that is something strange really so I can take on C6 and take on E5 if I want is there a trap or something that I simply don't know doesn't look like that. Let's do it. Just grab in the pawn. Oh, yeah. Have a headache after this game. Previous one. It's really, really cool. So, have an extra pawn, but black has a pair of bishops, some tricks still. So I have to be careful. There is the question how to complete the development. Um, on the other hand, there is an interesting possibility now just to play queen f3, exerting additional pressure on f6. I think it will help me to damage the pawn structure on the king's side. 
Well, bishop on a5 is definitely misplaced. So bishop b4 is not a move, in my opinion. Bishop c5 should be played there in that position after d3. Just a normal theoretical move. I'll just take it with pleasure. Maybe it was too early. It still looks quite good for white. So extra pawn, right? Better pawn structure. I mean, much better pawn structure. Very simple development of the pieces. Yeah. Now I think just d4 should be good. Bishop h3 was a bit better. Then f5, in my opinion, because now I just take here. And I can do this. And even this. And I have a feeling that this bishop b6 will never come back to play. Never ever. Okay. I'll take it. I will take it. Now I have kind of extra minor piece, I think. Well, at least it feels like that. Now it doesn't even feel like this. It's really that. Extra minor piece. Well, there are so many different ways leading to win. Let's take one of them. Yeah, previous game was really cool. <laughs> I'm just, <coughs> sorry, I'm still thinking about it. So, 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 there is the trick, I can't see the trick. Bishop goes to f8, the only move. And now... All right, let's go away. And grab something more. All right, so Bishop B4, I just said that already is a mistake. 
Well, actually, after c3, it's possible to save the pawn by playing bishop d6 or something, but at the very least, it gives me the extra temple. So it's not necessary to give white extra temple for no reason, right? Yeah, let's play shelling. Let's play shelling now. It will be very tough. It will be very tough. Play such a good player by the end of the show. And Karakan. Yeah. I forgot to do my homework. I forgot to do my homework. I forgot to do my homework, but I have a feeling that knight e5 should be played here. Let's do it. <clears throat> Knight takes f7 is not correct, but knight g6 can be something. <clears throat> it's kind of provocation. There are a lot of uh, lines of this kind in Karakhan when black provokes white to sacrifice something and then there is the question White wins or not because if white doesn't win then he loses Having no material Now there is a choice between rookie one and knight of five so knight f5 takes f5, rook e1, knight e4. What is that? Kramnik student says, wish formless Craig and Shalin all beat Andre. But formless already lost Karamnik student. You missed something. I already played formless today. And I won. <sighs> so let's focus. I'm a piece down, right? What will happen if I play rook to e1? Where the king goes? Now there is simply knight goes to b8, something like this. Yeah, I think knight f5 should be just good. Let's do it. Bishop a5. As expected, Andre, I was sure you will put off the Karo. Okay. 
I have no idea why I spent so much time on this night at five. It was, yeah, just natural idea. But anyways, okay. Let's play this. There is the question, to take on e4 or not to take, or just to take on d8 and to play this. In case I take on d8, I will have what? I will have the rook against three minor pieces, which is which is very bad for me. So let's just take on e4. I think that that is the correct way. Now let's see what is going on here. I think there should be just a checkmate by force somewhere. So if king d7, then queen g4 check. Depriving king of c8 square. If king f6, then I just take on d8. So it makes no sense. If king goes to f7, I also just take on d8 and I have enormous quantity of extra pawns here, by the way. I can also play queen g6 here, king g8, and after that I can take on d8. So it's absolutely a winning position now for white. Absolutely, I mean, no chances for black at all. So if I start with the queen g6, king goes to e7, rook to e1, king goes to d7, queen e6, checkmate. Yeah, so it makes no difference. It's time to resign. But I have only one minute on the clock, so maybe my opponent wants to flog me. But now let's count the pawns first. Have two extra pawns, right? Yep. Okay. Maybe only the fact that I'm tired will save my opponent. Bishop where? To f6 is just good enough. Mm. Or queen e8. Do know. C7. 24 seconds, my goodness, I lost on time. I'm just lost on time. Oh, that is just painful. I mean, it's absolutely winning position, but I'm losing on time. Amazing. Just amazing. Oh. My God. Yeah, that is something. Fuck. So stupid. Really. Yeah, the worst game of today. Yeah. 
Oh my god, how is it possible? Tell me, please. How is it possible? How is it possible to lose such a position? I don't understand. Just a series of stupidest possible moves. Okay, king f7. Yeah, just to start with, why not to take here on d8 immediately? Pfft, just stupid. Um, yeah. There were so many different ways. My goodness. I just take take on d8 and that's it. Two extra pawns. The king on f7. Well, G queen g6 is also winning, right? King g8, bishop here, queen d5. But queen d5 is necessary to find a good move. Something like bishop f6. Instead of this stupid bishop c7 with no threats at all. So let's check bishop f6 if, if it was better. So queen takes a2. Let's say... Well, even bishop c7, to be honest, was a guy. The only thing after queen takes a2, rook e1, is very bad. So just c3, play c3 and everything is fine. So queen b1 at very least. Again, at very least I have an extra pawn and so on. Yeah, that's just amazing. But all right, I think my opponent will never ever play queen b6 against me. And the last game of today will be against uh, Epinikion. Except... Yeah, that was really just a stupid game. And as you can see, the opening had nothing to do with the result. So I just, yeah, just lost the focus by the end of the game. Very bad. Very, very bad. Yeah, happens. Yeah, something amazing. Okay, so now, let's just take this first. And then we'll see, maybe d5, maybe bishop e6 first. I think bishop e6 is a bit more solid. Getting rid of that bishop on this diagonal. Exerting pressure on my f7. And then d5 looks just natural. But I'm not sure that it is on time. On the other hand, why not? Let's do it. Yeah, that was painful to lose the game in such a position. Amazing. Still have to work on my concentration in winning position. Right, so I think I have a chance to, to do something like this. So if white takes, the pawn structure will be not that cool.
And that is interesting. Now what about this move? Just exerting additional pressure on d3, trying to force white to take on e4. It's kind of blunder because white can take on e6 now. And then to play d4. No, d takes e4. d4 was much better than this because now I guess I have a complete compensation for this pawn. So where to put the knight? There is the question. To f6 or b6. I think to f6 after all. Now I have to regroup my pieces a bit to exert pressure on e4. Have to be careful about bishop b3 at some point. Attacking my rook. Let us start with this move. Restricting knight a3 a bit. So white has an extra pawn, but it doesn't feel like white has extra material, right? Because these pawns are doubled and bad. So they only restrict white's pieces, not help. All right. Actually forces me to play c5, provokes. But I wanted to do this myself. So ideally, I wanted to put this pawn on c4 just to restrict the bishop as well as the knight on a3. That was the plan. Now I can do this. Pawn e4 restricts the own bishop. So bishop c2 is very passive. Let's keep doing what was planned. Now after knight h5, queen has not so many moves. Knight g6 either. <clears throat> On the other hand, that is the natural root for my knight. <clears throat> Prevent and check. 
on b8. Now knight e3 is a threat. Oh my god. What is going on here? Is it really playable? I will be really surprised if it is. Uh huh. Yeah, it's playable because I just made a blunder. Very stupid one. But my opponent didn't punish me for it. I was quite lucky. Yeah, with one second on the clock, I actually finished this game. Well, I deserved the win here, but uh, once again, being a bit not focused uh, by the end of the game, I could have lost. Uh, so let's come back to this position. Yeah, I just missed this knight f3 with the attack against my knight and creating a threat of knight uh, e5 at the same time. Uh, but probably it was not that bad. I mean, I thought that knight h4 is also a threat, but now I can see that h4 is controlled, right? Yeah, h4 is controlled. So I have, I still have the time to uh, approach the queen, but maybe not. I mean, h4. If I play queen e6, there is... No, it's okay. After h5, I just take the queen. And if h takes g6, uh, I just take with the queen. Yeah. And so on. Yeah, so black is still fine here. So after e4, uh, the whole idea was just a bluff, I think. Uh, this knight e5 and so on. And e4 itself. So after knight e6, rook e6, it was possible to play d4. That was a move that not only solves all white's problems, uh, but also creates great problems to black. So I don't know what to do here. I thought... I would uh, play something like knight f6, exploiting the pin along the d-file. Because here, as we can see, pawn on e4 is protected. Uh, but still, white can simply play queen f2, attacking the knight e5, and once the knight goes away somewhere, the knight a3 comes to play. Something like this. I think this position is simply better for white. So f-file, which white can use uh, this bishop, which will be very active very soon. And the prospect of just playing c4, d5, and so on. So, yeah, white is just better here after d4. Which means that this e4 was not more than just a bluff. Knight d4 was absolutely correct reaction, because now if I take on d3, you just take with the queen, creating a threat of a checkmate, very annoying one. If I take on d4, you just take with the pawn, and again, you have good center. But after knight e5, knight e6, and rook e6, of course, it was necessary to play d4. Yeah, because here, after d takes e4, I have a perfect position. Well, maybe it is not winning for black, maybe it is not a decisive advantage, maybe it is not even an advantage at the moment, but definitely something really pleasant to play, because your pieces are absolutely misplaced, and my pieces just occupy very good positions, very active ones, I have no problems with finding follow-ups, so... Everything is just natural. The D file, the E file, locating square E5, and so on. Yeah. So next time, be careful about uh, taking pawns like this, because it usually leads to very bad consequences in general. Thanks a lot for being with me this night. Um, sorry for actually uh, the loss against Shalim. Uh, that was really painful. But I'm happy that I lost to Craig today because Craig played a really cool game. It was very imaginative series of sacrifices and he definitely deserved a win. 
uh, thanks a lot for it. Um, by the way, if you want to keep playing mm, a bit later, I mean in sort of 11 hours, uh, you can join me uh, on uh, my YouTube channel. So I will be doing uh, the broadcast on my own um, and you're welcome. Uh, so especially guys who didn't play uh, today, sorry, tonight, right? So this time uh, you will have a chance uh, tomorrow, but uh, I won't play on Chess24. It will be a different, d d different resource. So just um, subscribe to my channel and you will be notified. Um, for um, premium members, there is the information. So uh, next week, there will be the next episode of um, Training Tuesday. It is already announced. Uh, so uh, most likely it will start at the same time. I mean, normal standard time, uh, 7.30 uh, by Europe, Central European time zone. Uh, and we will discuss very important topic of uh, coordination of attacking resources. So uh, not every time attack is something forcing. And uh, you should know how to coordinate your attacking units. Uh, I think uh, this episode will, will be very important and very useful. So uh, I will be happy if you attend. Uh, have a nice weekend and see you very soon. Bye bye.